Today, I will show you how I go about Mavic 2 Pro photo editing. Make your images look great. Comment right up. If we are just meeting for the first time, I'm Felix with Quadcopter Guide, and on this channel, I help you get the most out of your drone and other filmmaking gear. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And be sure to stick around till the end of the video where I will show you how you can get a free trial of the software I use in this tutorial, as well as a coupon to save you a couple bucks if you decide to buy it. All right, let's jump into editing the Mavic 2 Pro images. So let's jump into Luminar and take a look at the first image. Now on the right here, you've got your kind of tools to develop the image or to edit the image. And I've made a custom kind of workspace, which is a mix between the professional and the aerial photography workspace. And you can just kind of arrange these tools as you want and add, they call them filters, add whatever filters you want and then you can save it as a new workspace. So that's what I did. I could, and I just call it drone photos. These are raw images from the Mavic 2 Pro. And as you know, raw images are not processed in camera. So we kind of have to do that after the fact. And the first thing that's kind of super obvious is this curved horizon. So that's gonna be the first thing that we fix. And for that, we go here under raw develop and lens. And sometimes I do the kind of auto lens distortion correction. And then I usually have to adjust it manually as well. It just kind of depends on the image. And in this case, I'm not gonna use the auto. I'm just gonna play with the slider. So you can see what that looks like. There's a helpful grid laid over and you can see when you move it in either direction, it kind of fixes that barrel distortion that we get. And if we go around here, now you can see that if you look at the horizon up here, there's still like here would be too far because now it's kind of concave, but I found right around here. So it's not perfect. But if I go much more than this, it just does it a little too much. So in this case, I kind of like 79. Now, unfortunately, you can't just set it to 79 every time. It depends on the angle and how far away you are from the subject. So you just kind of have to play with that. Okay, so we've got the distortion taken care of. Now, kind of the first real adjustment of the image has to do with the, kind of the highlights and shadows. And here's a nice little histogram that they give you. And so let's see what else we got here. We can always adjust the temperature if you're not a fan of the white balance you shot it at. Obviously going left gives it a more cooler look and going to the right gives it a little bit of a warmer look. And you can just go kind of extreme, but the, the key to editing is to make it look realistic. And then if you wanna go back to the what it was before, you can just go up here and choose as shot. So let's go down here and let's adjust the highlight first. You can kind of see what that does. It kind of blows them out if you go too far to the right. And let's see on the left. I do kind of like the sunset look, which is a little bit darker. So kind of let's leave it there. And let's adjust the shadows. You can kind of see what that does. And let's, let's see, that looks good right there. Now I do want to give it a little bit of a warmer look than this even. So I will adjust that temperature. Let's see. You just kind of have to play it by ear and see what looks good to you. For this one, I kind of like that. It gives the sand a nice color and it doesn't make it look unrealistic. There's all kinds of different filters you can play with and you can kind of see what that does. In this case, I kind of like the sky as is, so I'm gonna leave that. And let's go on to saturation. Now, if you look at these buildings over here, I find the color is almost too saturated as is. So I'm gonna remove a little bit of that saturation. And let's go to right around here. Now what's also cool is if you've got a horizon kind of in the middle of the image, you can adjust just the top half and the bottom half. In this case, that doesn't apply, so we just leave it. Here the golden hour. This is very kind of handy for drone shots. I tend to take most of mine around or near the real golden hour. So this kind of accentuates that look. And so you can see what that does. If you go too far, obviously it's way oversaturated, but that's why also they give you a saturation slider here. So let's see what looks good here. Somewhere in between there. So how about right there? And saturation. You know, I kind of see what zero looks like. We could take it down just a little bit more. 
if that was too much for you, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so then below golden hour, there's one last thing, it's sharpening. And since raw images aren't sharpened in camera at all, I usually give it just a little bit of sharpening right around 10. And now at this zoom level, you can't really tell much, but let's say 200%. Take a look at some of these sun loungers. And if we were to remove that completely, it gets a little bit blurrier. And then if you move it, it kind of gets digitally over sharpened and we want to avoid that. So I just do right around 10. I think that's fine because no one, you don't look at an image pixel peeping like this. You kind of look at it as a whole. So that's fine for me. So let's take a look at the before and after. This is what the image looked like before editing. And that's what it looks like after. And there's also this kind of fancy before and after slider. So I think that turned out really well. So this next image was taken straight down. And one quick tip on the Mavic 2 Pro, the five directional button. I've got the button when you push it to the top, reprogrammed to move the gimbal 90 degrees down or up. So if I want to quickly aim the gimbal perfectly straight down, or perfectly straight level, I can just hit up on the five directional button and it does it for me. Okay, so let's jump into the second picture here. As you can see, there's a little bit of distortion because this kind of walkway on the beach was actually straighter than this. And you can also kind of see these chairs on the side that they're kind of curved out and they're actually a little bit straighter than that in true life. So we're gonna go to the top. We've got our drone photos workspace activated. I'm gonna go over to lens, and this time, let's see what the lens distortion does. Okay, so you can tell that kind of overdid it. So if we correct it ourselves, if we give it a little bit of a help, uh, it's starting to look better. Those guidelines are helpful. So here we're way too far, mm, starting to look better. And then if you let go, it kind of processes it and makes it a little bit sharper. So we'll leave it at that. Now let's go back to the adjustments. This image isn't very contrasty, but that's okay. Let's take a look at our highlights. We can kind of see what that does. Kind of like it right around there. Let's take a look at the shadows. I won't need a lot because the shadows are already pretty good. If we go too far, you can see the sides get too dark and I don't like that. So let's see, let's go right around there. All right. So one cool thing that um, Luminar has that I haven't really found anywhere else, is this Accent AI filter. And you can kind of see what that does. It gives it a little bit of clarity, removes that haze a little bit. I don't know how to describe it. But on certain images, it works really well. On, on some, I just leave it off. But in this case, let's see. The key to editing photos well is to, to go see what the effect does, take it back, and then right before it gets too noticeable, just kind of leave it there. I found that's a pretty handy rule on editing pictures. Let's see, golden hour. Now you can see how it's getting way oversaturated, but that's okay, we can adjust the saturation. So let's try 50 here and bring this back down to even it out. Let's see, what does that look like? Might be still a little bit oversaturated. Uh, let's leave it around that. Since these images are raw, I usually do just a little bit of sharpening so leave this around 10. All right, so we've got our adjustments made. And then once again, we can look at the before and after. So here's the image before any adjustments. And here it is after. Looks good. Okay, here we have the next photograph that we want to edit. This one is kind of aiming the drone out to see. What's pretty cool is there's a moon. We've got these nice colors in the sky. Now you can see in this case that the gimbal wasn't perfectly horizontal, so we'll fix that. And while we prove that the earth is not flat, I think that we need to adjust the lens distortion just a little bit. Let's jump over to the lens correction. And I believe in this case, this might be plenty. So we got rid of kind of that vignetting around the side and the horizon's a little bit straighter. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't need to adjust it anymore in this case, but I do wanna adjust the rotation. So if we go over here and transform, there is the rotate. And you can see that it kind of rotates the image. Uh, it's looking a little bit too blue to me. So let's see what we can do by adjusting the white balance temperature. There we go. We're getting a little bit more of those purples in the sky. And the water reflection is turning real nice. Something like that. Take a look at the highlights. It opens up that sky a little bit more. Something like this. 
looks good. And then the shadows, kind of want to avoid that vignetting. So in this case, I'm going to go positive in the highlight and the shadows, I'm sorry, something like that. Now, if the highlight and shadows isn't enough, we can also edit whites and blacks and that just kind of takes it one step further. So let's see, kind of like how it brightens up the image. So I'll leave it like this and then the blacks, stick those down just a hair to give it a little bit of contrast like that. You don't need to mess with those this time. Another cool filter is kind of this dehaze. See what that does? And once again, you just want to go just to where it's noticeable and maybe a hair back, something like that. We're gonna leave the golden hour off, just apply our sharpening and call it good. So let's take a look at the before and after. Before, after. And of course you can use the links in the description below to get a free trial of Luminar, which I used in this tutorial. And if you like it, there's also a coupon code for you guys to save around, I think 15 to 20%. So be sure to use that to save some coin if you like it. All right, question of the day. What do you use to edit your drone photos? Do you also shoot in RAW? I'd love to hear your answers. Let me know in the comments below. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of the other great content on this channel. Thanks.